The White House is sounding the alarm, again announcing the very deplorable state of the Ukrainian army, which has lost U.S. military assistance. As John Kirby, coordinator of strategic communications at the U.S. National Security Council, said, the armed forces of Ukraine are beginning to retreat, losing territory, and this could turn into a disaster. A White House representative spoke on ABC television, where he criticized the U.S. Congress for delaying the allocation of additional funding for Ukraine. According to him, the Ukrainian army, left without shells, is forced to retreat, occupying a second and a third line of defense. Kirby did not explain where he got this information from, but the whole point is that Kiev does not yet have a second or third line of defense, they are only being built at an accelerated pace. So there is nowhere to retreat there, said the White House coordinator. Earlier, Ukrainian resources reported that the new commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, SIRSKY, is forced to send fresh forces to contain the advance of the Russian army near Avdiivka, since the second line of defense, where the Ukrainian military could retreat, is not ready. Therefore, now Kiev is buying time to build it with the lives of Ukrainian soldiers. As Zelensky previously stated, Ukraine plans to build three defense lines with a total length of about 2,000 kilometers. At the same time, commenting on the consideration of the bill on assistance to Ukraine in the U.S. Congress, Kirby emphasized that time is of the essence. U.S. Senator American troops could end up in conflict if $61 billion Ukraine aid package is not passed. A top Senate Democrat has raised concern that U.S. troops could find themselves in harm's way if Congress doesn't approve an additional $61 billion in support for Ukraine in its ongoing war with Russia, according to NTD Media Outlet. Senator Mark Warner, the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, reiterated calls for the House of Representatives to pass a new tranche of U.S. funding for Ukraine's war effort during press remarks. This time, the Virginia Democrat warned that America's men and women in uniform could be thrown into a more direct conflict with Russia if the United States doesn't instead spend more money to bolster Ukraine's war effort. I can't think of an issue that is of more historic proportions than supporting the Ukrainians at this moment, Warner told Bloomberg News. The United States has already provided about $113 billion in Ukraine-related aid since the full-scale conflict began in February 2022. This U.S. funding has since run dry. This February, the Senate approved a $95 billion supplemental spending bill that includes about $61 billion in new Ukraine-related aid, in addition to several billion more for other global security partnerships and projects. While the bill passed the Senate, it has seen no additional progress in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. President Joe Biden and Congressional Democrats have repeatedly demanded House Speaker Mike Johnson advance the bill, as have some Republicans. Warner argued that if Ukraine doesn't get enough support and is eventually defeated, Russian President Vladimir Putin could then set his sights on conquering Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland, all of which are formal allies of the United States through the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. If Putin wins in Ukraine, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland will be next. He told Bloomberg News, and American soldiers could be in harm's way and in conflict within a couple of years. That would be a disaster, and it would be a disaster that would be laid at the feet of the Speaker of the House who hasn't brought this bill up. Russia is skirting NATO's red line. Representatives of the alliance become a military target. Russia's alleged satellite signal jamming of a military aircraft carrying the British Defence Minister would, if confirmed, be Moscow's latest flirtation with a hard NATO red line, the safety of Allied leaders. According to Newsweek, Grant Shapps was returning from a visit to observe NATO military drills in Poland when interference occurred close to the Russian Baltic exclave of Kaliningrad, a strategic and heavily militarized location known as an electronic warfare hub. The interference lasted around 30 minutes, blocking cell and internet connection and forcing the aircraft to revert to alternative location technologies. An unnamed British Defence Ministry source told The Times that the Royal Air Force is well prepared to deal with this. 
but suggested such measures put an unnecessary risk on civilian aircraft and could potentially endanger people's lives. The incident, the source added, was wildly irresponsible on Russia's part. However, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's spokesperson downplayed concerns. It didn't threaten the safety of the aircraft and it is not unusual for aircraft to experience GPS jamming near Kaliningrad, which is of course Russian territory, they said. The Shaps incident is not the first, nor even the most serious, occasion on which a NATO member minister has potentially been endangered by Russian military activity. Just last month, a Russian missile struck Odessa while Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis was visiting the port city of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The missile fell somewhere between 700 and 1,600 feet of the Greek leader, according to multiple reports. Killing or wounding a NATO leader would not automatically trigger the alliance's Article 5 Collective Defense Clause. While allies agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all, members must agree to invoke Article 5. NATO's founding document notes that any military assistance must be given in accordance with their respective constitutional processes, meaning the agreement of national decision-making bodies.